So, um, we went back. He always does this. And we reflected on some things here betwixt our large gap, one video a week type filming. And we may or may not have realized that the last time that we sat down, again, not to film a bunch oh, of videos in one day. I know where he's going. That I may or may not have worn this exact same shirt the last time. So, what the we last can, time we filmed, the last time we filmed like five videos on a day. Yeah, and so what we can take from this is that I <laughs> like how I look in dark blue, or or I need more shirts. <laughs> I think that's the one we need to go with. And uh, so for those of you who are looking at our past videos, you know, in the little videos tab of our channel, and there's going to be like nine of them in a Great row where I look so exactly the same. The hair is different. I got a haircut. What do you guys think? Do you like it? But yeah, the shirts, the shirts, the same. We did not film all of these on the same day. I promise you that. We just, or we might have, and I just changed my shirt. That's true. We could be but, having a little, I could have just gone with some shears. And, but yeah, I just thought I'd bring that up to you guys. We're which is late. really completely irrelevant to anything that you're here to see or, or hear about. Mm -hmm. But you know, what the heck. But you know what? We're four videos deep today and it's punchy time. <laughs> That's right. Woo! Okay. Welcome back. Realistic system for handling missile weapon combat. Let's go. Let's go! So, like we said before the break, welcome back everybody. Um, we're going to be talking today about a realistic system for handling missile weapons in combat by none other than Perry T. Cooper! If you guys, yeah, applause, sound effect. If you guys know Perry T. Cooper, uh, are Perry T. Cooper, or have come into contact with Perry T. Cooper over the course of your life, you know the drill. Comment down below, because this has been somewhat successful now. When we say this and we talk about people, some people of you guys actually do know you some know things people, about yeah, them. Which is really cool. Yes, <laughs> it's kind of neat. So if you do know anything about this person, comment down below. We'd love to get some more info about him. But, but. Perry T. Cooper Perry T. wrote Cooper. an article back in 1981. This was the fourth edition of Pegasus Magazine. Pegasus Magazine was published, I want to say, from 1981 to 1982. Uh, I think it was only like a two-year stint. But Pegasus Magazine was put out by Judges Guild uh, at the time. And Judges Guild, very early on, produced something, you may have heard of it, uh, City State of the Invincible Overlord. And that was a very, very popular AD&D... It was a very popular AD and D material from a non TSR company back in the late, or back in the very early 1980s, back in well late 70s, early 80s. Anyway, Pegasus Magazine. It was just one of the many role playing game magazines that came out in the late 1970s, early 1980s. Uh, it had some really good articles in it, it's, and it's kind of a shame to me that it only ran for two years. But one of the articles that I was reading just the other day in Pegasus number four was a, an article entitled A Realistic System for Handling Missile Weapon Combat by... Perry T. Cooper. Perry T. Cooper. The man himself. Now, and this is one of the things that I think that... I We have probably had more discussions about this, not just you and I, but the people that I've played with... <laughs> excuse me, over the years. We have discussed... <coughs> excuse me. This guy. We have discussed the problems with missile weapon combat in D&D ad nauseum. Um, we've never come up with a satisfactory solution to it. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of the main reasons for this was the idea that if you're using a bow, the most damage that you are allowed to do in the, not that kind of a bow, if you're using a bow, the most damage that you're going to be doing with an arrow is six points. Yeah. So you're going to roll a six-sided die. Well, to, with a standard bow and arrow. Right, to determine your, your damage. And it never seemed, it never seemed a good thing that you had no option for abs for just killing someone with one arrow, with the exception of if you roll a twenty and then drop them. But that's not in the rules. I mean, this is that's true. That's a good is, point. This is that's a, a good point. That's not an actual AD and D rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there was really no system in place to kill somebody with a bow if they had more than if they had seven or more hit points. So. There were a lot. There's a lot of discussion about this back in the day about how this should be handled, and still current, and, there, and still it's still happening today. Yeah. And this this article by Perry T. Cooper, a realistic system for handling missile weapon combat, goes a ways to goes goes toward ad addressing this issue. Yeah. 
I'm not saying that I agree totally with Mr. Cooper's approach, but I do like a lot of what he has to say. I'm going to read this bits and pieces out of this article to you, and then I'm hoping that you will respond for what with what you've done. I know a lot of you have come up with your own missile weapon system. Yeah. I would really like to know what you've done. It might be we something that I will put into my system. Civilly discuss in the comments. Right. Our thoughts. Yeah, nobody's wrong or right on this. It's just I want to know how other how different people yeah. have approached yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So Mr. Cooper, again, this is back Mr. in 19... Perry T. Cooper. Perry T. Cooper, back in 1981, starts off his article uh, by saying, In the area of missile weapon combat, no one has ever come up with a realistic and truly workable system for advanced Dungeons & Dragons. And again, that's that's been the argument. Under official AD&D rules, weapons such as a bow could only score a measly one to six points of damage per hit. Uh, it especially disturbed me to realize that, under these rules, no one with seven or more hit points could be slain with a single crossbow bolt or arrow, even though, realistically, anyone could be killed in such a way, and it often happened. In fact, I think, well, Richard Richard the Lionheart was killed. He was killed by a crossbow. He was killed by a crossbow, but he, he didn't, he died later. I think he... Well, he, he got infected. It got infected. Yeah, he got sepsis or something. I'm not sure, yeah. But we digress. Yes. Um, anyway, Mr. Cooper goes on to say, Eventually, I decided that a system which allowed a character with seven or more hit points to be immune to sudden death like this was not realistic. I don't care how high level your character may be. If he finds himself suffering the sort of migraine that can be caused by a crossbow bolt lodged in his gray matter... He's going to keel over, so I set out to reform the system. Well said, Perry T. Cooper. <laughs> I, really, I, like, I like Perry T. <clears throat> okay, so missile weapon combat should produce quick kills more, much more often. Why? Well, missiles are harder to detect in approaching their targets than swords or clubs are. Missiles move swiftly and silently through the air and approach from a much greater distance than close melee weapons. This means it is often impossible for the target creature to dodge or block the missile in time. And, of course, the attacker isn't having to rush his attack for fear his opponent may get him first. Frequently, missiles may not even be noticed by the target creature until the missiles have lodged themselves into the creature, and by then it's a bit late. The idea is simple. Every time a creature is struck by a missile weapon, the DM needs to... Okay, this is his, his, ap his, his approach, his solution. The idea is simple. Every time a creature is struck by a missile weapon, the DM rolls his percentile dice. If the unfortunate creature is listed in the monster manual as large, bigger than a human, it dies on a roll of 1 to 5 on a percentile. If it is medium-sized, it dies on a roll of 1 to 20. If it is small, it dies on a roll of 1 to 35. The reason for the different percentages is that any arrow lodging in the tiny body of a rat has a much better chance of piercing a vital organ and thus of causing sudden death than does an arrow which comes to rest in the huge body of a dragon. Logical, Seems fair. Really means, makes sense. <clears throat> Note that the quick kill possibility role is not designed merely for the benefit of player characters. It should be employed for monsters which use missile weapons as well. That will not comfort any player who has come across a manticore which can rain spikes and thus death from above, but it is only fair that occasionally a spike should find its way into a player character's heart. We don't mean romantically. <laughs> so, the AD&D system also calls for subtraction of an attacker's chances to score a hit with a missile at both the long and medium range with the odds left alone at short. At short range, I find that very reasonable, but I do not find it reasonable that, that the size of the target creature is not figured into the equation. I agree with that. I'm going to have to go along with him on that. Um, he goes on to state, why do I feel that the size of the, of the target is important? Well, let's say your character has his crossbow ready and is firing at three opponents, all of them 100 feet away. The creatures are a pseudo-dragon, a man in plate armor with a shield, and a green dragon. The pseudo-dragon is 18 inches long, the man is 6 feet tall, and the dragon is 36 feet long. Which one do you think will be the toughest to hit? It's got a fair point. Mm -hmm. Perry T. Cooper has a very good point here. He does. Well said, Perry T. I think the discrepancy here is obvious. Anyway, his remedy to this problem is to give missile weapon attackers a plus 5 to hit when they are firing at large creatures, and a minus 5 when they are firing at small creatures. For medium-sized creatures, the odds are left alone. It has been suggested... Oh, okay, <clears throat> there's also... There will be a temptation for many DMs to make certain creatures exempt from the quick kill possibility role. It has been suggested to me, for example, that undead, such as skeletons, have no heart or brain. Kind of a Wizard of Oz thing going there. 
um, have no heart or brain and thus cannot be instantly killed with a well-placed arrow. Also, it may not seem right that some incredibly lucky urchin with a bow could conceivably slay a major demon or godling due to the quick kill possibility. I see the logic in these arguments, but I think these matters are best left to the discretion of individual DMs. I like, the way, that he, I like the way he brings that in. Yeah. What do you think of this? I think that in a lot of ways it makes sense. I think that the numbers are off. That's, I think, the exact same thing. I think that there should be... The percent, I, I like the percent chance of killing something instantly. I think that that makes a lot of sense because, you know, if you're shot with a bow in the chest, it's not looking good necessarily. And there is a pretty good chance that you might be killed straight out of the gate. They do a lot of damage. But 1 to 20, I think, might be. That's a lot. That's a you're real. Gonna be, you're going mean, to be killing people you're going to be right taking people down all yeah. the time and i think that you know there's there's a lot of body that you can hit you have to take into account that people are going to be wearing armor if somebody has plate armor on and you've got a short bow there's a good chance you're not going to be able to get through the armor in the first place right. and that's armor class still needs to be taken into account when you are doing these calculations now i agree with that completely mm. and i think that it should be taken one step further to mitigate this problem mm -hmm. But this makes it more complicated, which I don't like. Yeah. But I believe that it could be that you do something. And maybe if you played this way enough times, it would become second nature to you. I don't know. Yeah. Give, us, give us your thoughts. Yeah, let us know what you're saying. I believe that based on how many points over your die roll is from what you need to hit, mm. that's where your percentages come in. Okay. So if you need a 15 to hit with your longbow, and you roll an 18, maybe you get a 2% chance per point over to get that roll you need to have the instant kill. You need a 15, okay. you've rolled an 18, therefore you have a 6% chance of getting that instant kill. Sure. If you roll, But if you just roll, if you need a 15 and you, you roll, roll a 16, 16 yeah. you get a 2% 2 chance, chance of having that kill. Okay. To me, that factors in the luck of the die roll, but... If you get an 18 or a 19 as opposed to a 15, that means you've got you've hit more in the area of the target that you wanted to tar that you wanted to hit in the first place. Yeah, and that then is playing into whether or not you hit that vital organ that you were aiming at. Yeah, and ended up getting an instant kill on the on the creature. But I think at the same time, getting an instant kill on a god or a demon. If you roll a 20, and with the way we do our criticals, I think that it should be an option. Usually we, with our criticals, you roll a 20. If you roll a 6, you kill whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, we roll a 6 on the... You roll a, your critical, you roll a 6 out of die. If you get the 6, it's an automatic kill no matter what the creature is. There's, it's yeah, only I mean, happened a few times. gives you what? Like a 2-3% to 3 chance, something like that? On no, any, it's very low. It, it's very low chance yeah. of this happening. But we do have we do have it as an option because sometimes it's just a cool game changer when, yeah. when you're able to pull that kind of a kill and off. stuff weird stuff does happen sometimes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, but I think that be that as it may, I don't think that um, arrows are given enough credibility for being able no. to kill someone. No, not at all. And I think that in particular, my issue with arrows is when they are being shot at people who are unarmored, very armored, Versus. very lowly armored, things like that. Like if you're mustering your army to right. go and fight a bunch of people and it's just humans fighting humans then you're going to want a people who, want a lot of people who have bows to be shooting at the other people you're attacking if you're fighting a bunch of i don't know machines that somebody has created that you're going to be that you're going to be going after then you probably aren't going to want a bunch of people with bows and arrows but if you are shooting some person some orc whatever it might be that doesn't have a lot of armor on with a bow then that could do a lot of damage because it's, you know, it'll get right in through there. But again, even if people are just wearing plate armor, that decreases the effectivity of this. So it's a very complicated question to try and figure out. And I think that's why we've been battling with it, no pun intended, for yeah. so long and trying to come up with the best possible solution. But I think that this... I think it's, this is, I think it's, it's close. It's close. I think this yeah. is something to work with. It's a good step in the right direction because big things like dragons should be harder to kill, but if there is a possibility you could do it out of... Out of left field, small things, arrows will do more damage. That makes sense, yeah. logically. But anyway, we just I, I thought this was an interesting article of, of a perennial issue that we have faced, that we have wrestled with over the years. Yeah. And I just wanted to present it to you. And then probably most important, I wanted to get your input on how you deal with missile combat. Yeah. Uh, particularly arrows and crossbow bolts. Yeah. 
Um, so if you have any solutions that you've come up with over the years to this problem, please let us know. Yeah. And we may even end up doing another video. If we find some really good ones, we may do another video that presents some of those. That discusses it. But Arrow Combat, Pegasus Magazine, 1980 by... You don't remember his I name? I forgot his you? name. You've already forgotten his name. Perry T. Cooper. Cooper. Perry T. Cooper. Sorry, Perry. That was um, my mistake. Perry, we loved your article, and if you're out there, please get in touch with us. But We'd until such friend. time as we hear from Perry or we hear from you, I'm Jim. I'm Alex. Keep your short arm free. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>